This is taken from a car uh, amateur camera during a Bora wind. Bora wind belongs to a severe downslope wind storms similar to Ch Chinook, uh, Santa Ana, some winds in uh, uh, Caucasus, in uh, some other uh, Japanese places in uh, Southern America and so on. Uh, you don't see much waves here because they are all cut off by, by se uh, severeness uh, of the wind, uh, by the gusts. The gusts usually go double the mean wind speed there. So the mean temperature or first statistic moment is unimportant for that wind. It's a higher statistics. Um, if you take a careful look, you might see here small features. Those are uh, small convective clouds. Those are a cumulus fractus there, 100 meters above sea level or something. Below that, you can see uh, pulses, which are semi uh, quasi uh, periodic structures there or, or ordinary gusts and so on. And I love that, around 7,000 meters, you may see uh, nice uh, wave clouds. Those are autocumulus uh, uh, lenticularis. So the sea looks almost inviting for swimming, but I do not recommend that. And we lose lots of tourists during the Bora because they don't listen to uh, the warning, so they end up it's okay if they end up on, on the island over there, but typically they end up in halfway to Italy. Uh, I always give an uh, outline of my talk, even if it's very short, because when I was a PhD student in Reno, Nevada, Desert Research Institute, I got B in my seminars because I forgot to put uh, uh, the outlines. Although the content, they said it was good, but you had to be whipped a little bit to learn. So on board a downslope windstorm, I'll spend almost 50% of my time. So, so, so time uh, is not here uh, relevant in terms of the, the point. Something will be shorter or longer. Uh, Ekman layer, but from another perspective than what Andrea uh, talked, and I'll use it as a role model for weakly stable horizontally stratified, uh, uh, horizontally homogeneous boundary layer when you cool it slowly from, from below. Then we'll go more towards stratified and more stratified flows. So while these can be weakly stable, the other one will be strongly stable, and then slope flows. A role model is frontal model, and there I'll have some ideas and questions, probably I'm wrong there. And then something about Moninobuco uh, similarity theory versus uh, hockey stick uh, transition. Uh, and miscellaneous, only if you'll have uh, time or interest in that. Please stop me anytime uh, you want. Uh, I will gladly try to answer short questions if it's of technical nature, if I will know straight from my head. Uh, motivation. We always have to motivate what we do, otherwise uh, no money on projects, as you know. So here are three questions uh, that you can read yourself. And the quickest answers are uh, yes, no, no. Um, not to mention climate models, which in uh, operational resolution don't resolve most of these uh, mesoscale, not to mention microscale uh, flows. Of course, there are exceptions, there, there, there are scientific codes which run on two kilometers such uh, as one of the Swiss codes and, and the one Japanese codes and so on. So climate models, I did not want to criticize here because I'll put enough critique on other parts anyways. And society, needless to say, needs uh, progressively more and more answers for, for quicker and better uh, uh, models. Uh, Bora downslope windstorm. Uh, key parameter for all downslope windstorms is, uh, I call it vertical fruit number because there are several fruit numbers or more precisely, it's inverse of dimensionless height of the mountain. Mountain height maximum is H, N is buoyancy frequency, U is the wind flow uh, speed, uh, mean speed. And fluid number, if defined this way, should be roughly in this range to get wave breaking. Wave breaking, mountain wave breaking is a key ingredient for severe downslope wind storms. And in that sense, Bora is dynamically similar to what I said, Fern, Chinook, and so on. Of course, that effects are different 
because the elevations are different and the adiabatic heating is different, or mountains are lower, but then we need uh, other parameters different. No, no. That says wrong in Wikipedia. That's what I was taught when I was a student. It's not. It's not, because it starts to accelerate even before the mountain, even upwind. So, 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 so you must use a mountain wave theory of a nonlinear kind. It is not a catabatic flow. But it was taught so until uh, Ron Smith's seminar, uh, seminal work in mid-80s. So it's not. Um, here was supposed to be a nice movie of these gas that you saw in the very first photo that was supposed to be from YouTube. But I did not get my account on uh, Edurome. So I guess may maybe my university bankrupt or, or, or somebody is messing there. So no YouTube. But if you would like to see it, just send me an email. Uh, I'll send you a link to 51 second wonderful uh, movie from the first figure. Or I should change university. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Here is an oversimplified picture or sketch of uh, Bora flow. That cannot be overstressed that this is a simplified story. Uh, it's south of Split. Split is the second largest city in, in Croatia. If you go there, enjoy tourism, swimming, culture two, three thousand years old, and try not to get ripped off by your or waiters and waitresses. Yeah. This is oversimplified wind profile because there comes a real maximum low-level jet or shooting flow, which goes to, let's say, 50 or 60 meters per second aloft between half a kilometer and more. And here's oversimplified the dots for profile of TK, because here should go a real maximum aloft to, uh, let's say, 20 uh, joules per kilogram, or 20 meters squared per second squared aloft, so it's a secondary maximum because of wave breaking aloft. Mountain wave break happens there due to resonance between the mountain and the uh, atmosphere covered by a uh, uh, dimensionless fruit number, which I mentioned in the beginning. And then sliding instabilities, those can be Kelvin Helfman's types and, and so on. Just to get the overall picture how that goes. Dubrovnik town would be more south, uh, 200 kilometers more south. Uh, those are measurements or measurements, one second sample in the town of Seine, that is northern coast, uh, nearby Velebit. Velebit is the longest single mountain in whole Europe, like monolith mountain, 160 kilometers long. So the measurements, so you see average speed, and the gas typically go double. So rule of thumb is, if forecast tells you 15 meters per second, you count on 30. So if you open the door on your car, drive, you probably cannot close it. You need to wait uh, that the, the gust is over. If we uh, enhance, zoom out in the sixth hour or any others, you can see pulses here, those quasi-periodic features. Here they are six or seven, and they last, in this case, about seven minutes. Uh, 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 Dear, dear periodicity. Otherwise, those pul pulsations can be anywhere between one or two minutes to uh, 11 minutes due to secondary instabilities there. Uh, this is a sketch from Polos in Jazz Ops, uh, Jazz, that means Journal of the Atmospheric Sciences. Here's a sketch what happens when you have a mountain wave or gravity wave. Uh, above a catabatic flow down here without much interaction. So if here is a high or a ridge due to wave, that will locally enhance catabatic uh, flow. And vice versa, this catabatic flow will be weakened if aloft is a, a gravity wave trough. Uh, however, when wave breaking occurs, then, then flow, flow is much more um, wild uh, high pressure fl fluctuations occur and much of the turbulent uh, transport occurs. So third order uh, uh, terms are important in TK in turbulence kinetic energy equation. So now I'll show you a couple of numerical simulations by state-of-the-art 
numerical mesoscale models. They are all 3D runs, Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, turbulence parameterization is a world by itself, and I like to criticize that and try to change it last 20 years with uh, mediocre success. Uh, they use terrain influence coordinates. Uh, I think that David mentioned them sometime before, a uh, sigma type of sigma coordinate frame. First we use... Yes, basically, basically it's the same, but I avoid that word. Uh, because when you come to the top of the model, it, it does not follow the terrain. It follows terrain only nearby surfaces and then gradually smooths out. So I think it's more precise named uh, terrain influence, but we are talking about the same thing. Uh, COAMS is a, uh, those are both American models. This is from uh, Naval Postgraduate School, Monterey, a uh, couple ocean atmosphere <coughs> modeling package system, something like that. U.S. Navy uses as well. There should be ultimate somewhere in the acronym. Yes. Ultimate. Yeah. Yes. I agree. <laughs> and the resolution we used is uh, this one. And later on, we went to find a uh, resolution of only 111 meters, which we call it LES mode. This is not really LES. There is a huge principal difference between LES and, and uh, RANS. But you may say it's kind of LES mode because in a resolution, when you come so close to typical LES, then meteorologists use that uh, term. So we'll see those simulations. And almost needless to say, there is no good model for severe windstorm uh, uh, pulsations nowadays. We do have a hydraulic model by Ron Smith and Jalen Sun from mid 80s, and then some variations of that, but that's for the mean wind and it's 2D theory. Here flow goes from 2D to 3D easily. How pulses typically look, what we have here, here is the coast, the thickest line, dashed lines is, is potential temperature, so you can see that waves are turning and breaking. This is definitely unstratified. This is unstratified or con convective due to wave breaking anywhere. But pay attention to these shaded areas, which go above 29 meters per second. Uh, here is the scale. So we look for 100 seconds differences. So you see, this pulse is dying. Here is a newborn. Now it reaches mature phase and goes toward the island. It's here now, and the baby one is being born. The first one is dying out, a new one is approaching the uh, uh, mature phase. So those are the quasi-periodic pulses, among uh, other signals that you have there, uh, gustiness and, and, and pure turbulence and so on. Here's a simulation uh, using WARF, what I mentioned before, on 110 uh, meters. So you see, the flow starts to accelerate already uphill. Here is the mountain top. So this is one of the indirect proofs that this cannot be a catabatic flow, because catabatic flow will not accelerate uh, uphill. And you can see tongues of high and low speeds. We go minute by minute for a couple of hours here. Here is the town of Seine. I, I showed you measurements. Here is the island of Kirk, the largest in the Adriatic. Uh, next, we will take vertical profile here. So this is about 15 meters above uh, sea level. This is this uh, uh, sigma elevation uh, there. So we are now in the vertical profile. Again, we are showing uh, wind speed. So you see tremendous deceleration here around zero. So this is the wave breaking area where the wind, mean wind stalls essentially, and high speeds are down, down here, they go toward uh, 40 meters uh, per second. Here are grid points uh, are plotted on the x-axis. We managed to prove that in this case, Kelvin Helton's instability was primary, in, uh, uh, instability producing those uh, quasi-periodic pulses. Uh, there are other possibilities that we did check and they seem to work in other cases. The second one is intrinsically 3D behavior. First one, 
can be 1D, 2D, excuse me. Uh, this one is due to bubbling in wave breaking and vortex tilting down toward the surface and being uh, advected to our own measurements. And the third mechanism in literature that you may find can be both 2D and 3D, which is a uh, Lee waves propagation in a sort of waveguide. You, you need to think of waveguide in a very, very loose sense. There is no waveguide in the atmosphere as such. It, it, it's a theoretical concept, yeah, useful one. And that one seems that often works on the southern coast. Uh, let me show what happens if they are not pulses. We are now again on that profile. Here is that town of Seine. Here we also had measurements 700 meters. Here is the island of Kirk. This is rotor, so you see uh, our theta or isentropes. You see the wind <coughs> flow, and here happens rotor. In that case, happened rotor because uh, above there was a stream jet flowing, and jet may sort of linearize the flow so that wave breaking is weaker. And then here occurs angular bore, and here's plotted uh, turbulence. This TK turbulence produced <coughs> in, in a model, WARF model, is actually wrong. <coughs> this is one of the good things to see what, what should we know and learn about, about. Namely, strongest turbulence must be here and here, at the edges, because these strong horizontal rotors have also secondary rotors, and they are really wild in 3D. And fine aircraft measurements with a LIDAR show it that the maximum temperature is not here, excuse me, a TK is not here, but should be at the, at the edges. So that's to add a critique of, of our current uh, uh, numerical models. That needs to be improved. Uh, just to show from SAR, synthetic aperture radar, figures of two cases, how Bora may, may look. Uh, this is severe case, but this is all over severe case. Uh, here what you see is a wake. Uh, wakes typically occur uh, after the uh, mountain peaks, and jets typically occur after uh, passages in the mountains. Uh, here are some Lee waves noticed, and here what we discovered for the first time then, secondary or even tertiary uh, jets occurring. This is a scale of only 10 kilometers in horizontal. And here happens uh, convection on a scale of 100 or 200 uh, meters. Uh, all the way, you see how this wake is totally different than uh, in this case. Temperature difference between land and sea here was about 40 degrees. So here was freezing cold minus 20, and here uh, the sea was essentially cooking, almost cooking. Now we go more south. So far I was showing you flows up there. Here's comparison with measurements. We are nearby town of Split. I don't know why I show so much Split, probably because my father was born there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we use again WARF simulations. Flow here is intrinsically more 3D because of these uh, Dinaric Alps and then uh, Bosnian mountains. So the flow is already much preconditioned and, and 3D. Here is one hour simulation, so you can see pulses coming from these mountains. Down here is sea. So you see the, the pulses. Wind is here a little bit slower than before. Now it goes again, and here you get the detachment of the high speeds, which can go almost to, to Italy, that they see it sometimes in uh, their soundings. And here, the separation flow does not happen due to rotor, but sea breeze started, because this is a late April case, and the sea was cool enough, sun was warming enough here, so that sea breeze probably produced the detachment of, of Bora flow. Let's conclude on Bora and go a little bit further. I hope that I managed to tell you that as better instruments we see uh, in ap applications that we see finer and finer, progressively finer uh, structures and scales on less than one kilometer that may have cumulative effect on, on, the, on weather. <coughs> uh, surface pressure gradient is a 
key ingredient, as I said, for mountain wave breaking. Of course, that synoptic flow must start pushing the air, but then mesoscale, additional, due to mountain, uh, uh, adds more of this uh, gradient. A better simulations we did when we included uh, this type of turbulence mixing length scale. <coughs> this I did based on <coughs> Julian Hunt idea that when the flow is stratified, but Richardson gradient number is less than one, then in denominator should not be buoyancy frequency because buoyancy frequency is weaker than shear. Shear is in denominator there. Uh, so this is shear, uh, absolute, and then I, managed to calculate from TKE equation, turbulence kinetic energy equation, that here should go Richardson number and Prandtl number, which are both of turbulent uh, nature. We need all that for agriculture, for traffic, because we can get stop traffic for three or four days uh, in winter time. So, so islands are totally cut off, airports as well. Fire protection, you probably know that whenever you have such strong winds that uh, uh, firemen have serious problems with uh, doing their job. That happens in Southern uh, California quite often uh, if Santa Ana is blowing around the San Diego area. So we have it same for the, for the Bora. I already criticized that these uh, climate models don't see uh, these wind. One of the reasons is inadequate resolution, but I also bet on parametrizations. We cannot only blame on, on, on resolution. Resolution is, of course, present there, but, but better parameterizations definitely are, are, are needed, and they are scale dependent. So we have to keep on changing. Yes, Dave. Can I ask questions about, uh, you mentioned that there's some, one aspect of this is three-dimensional. Have people done careful three-dimensional studies of this effect and how do the results differ from our device three-dimensional models, especially if the ones that are taking very well? Uh, it's only idealized uh, cases are seriously addressed, but real cases are not. Mm -hmm. I have not seen that yet. But I mean, do, do the three-dimensional models capture the quality, at least quality of the somewhat quantitative effects of the acceleration, the surface hit acceleration? Numerical models do, yes. Numerical models do, because there is a competing effect between mountain wave steepening and eventual break, breaking on one side and flow uh, around the mountain. And there can be a lot, all sorts of uh, uh, asymmetries. Mm -hmm. And then these wakes behind start to behave in a weird way that, that is not fully understood. We managed to show that even uh, Coriolis becomes important if Bora blows on northern coast where the mountain is about 200 kilometers long. And if you wait one or two days, you get the scaling that uh, uh, that is important there. Thank you. Uh, what to do in future? It depends, of course, on <coughs> interest of students, and because half of my students go to work to Siemens and banks and yeah, other places. Uh, we, similar to your question, our idea is to put towers this way and that way and to study more of these 3D structures and, and to get real uh, measurements. Because if numerical models ca capture this, how shall we prove it? Ordinary MET stations are not good enough. They have one hour data or they have 10 minutes da data saved. That is not uh, good enough. We also want to study in turbulence uh, uh, triplet covariances. It seems that they are very important in transporting uh, turbulence up and down. Classical story about turbulent transport terms, which is a triplet covariance, doesn't work for Bora. It seems like that Bora turbulence is transported from jet down. So it's like sort of upside down turbulence thing. So I hope that I got you a little bit excited about severe downslope wind storms. In Istria, yes. Yes, but uh, less than in these cases. Trieste is one of the most known places, uh, uh, so I Italian coast. Istria. Istria, yes. Istria is south of, 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 of Trieste. So do you see the Istria as well? Yes, but not so, so, so large. More in northern Istria. Yeah, 
yeah. But on, on northern eastern coast, which belongs to Slovenia, Slovenia has 40 kilometers uh, of, of coast, they get uh, uh, Bora as well. They even get a little bit of fan effect because they have higher mountains than we. We don't get much of fan effect. Our mountains are one kilometer in scaling, and Slovenians are almost two kilometers. So uh, I'll use ECMA layer model as a role model for stable boundary layer. SBL is stable boundary layer. And I will try to separate them in two classes. Whenever you have to separate some boundary layers in more boxes and things, that means basically we don't understand what's happening there. More drawers, more pockets. Uh, this is, I just said, why is this important in meteorology? Uh, Adrian said nicely, why is that important in oceanography? Meteorologists use it in, in a dirty way, at least operational meteorologists uh, until 10 years ago. Cyclones filling. Uh, how long cyclones live? Typically, in operational models, they don't like to say that, but when you go on their meetings, sneak in what they talk among themselves, then you hear that cyclones live too long than in nature. So what do you do? Stronger Ekman filling. Just minimize the angle artificially. Dirty job. Air-sea interaction, air pollution and transport. Because these people there, they, they have to know uh, where is the boundary layer top. And boundary layer top is not, not always well-defined uh, feature, especially in strongly stable boundary layers and so on. Uh, we hear that today. That's easy to show on the blackboard. But when you go for light cooling, when you use ECMA layer as a weakly stable boundary layer, when you are in this range, they were made many experiments cooling, let's say, one Kelvin per four hours. And they studied 19 models, numerical models. Only half of them were able to produce the actual results because there are also measurements from Kabau Tower in uh, the Netherlands. And that angle there should be uh, between 30 and 35 degrees for weakly stable. So uh, this, this is at variance from what Adrian was telling because you had different conditions. I'm just cooling it from the other side. Uh, these people, Pedorovic and Alan Shapiro on the other show, that it's not that simple. They used even DNS and, and found various features there, which is quite appealing. Uh, this paper also shows that uh, alpha, the angle between uh, near surface and geostrophic wind may vary from 45 and always goes down clockwise when Z goes up for, for the atmosphere. Classical Ekman background, I'm sure that most of you have seen it. W means weakly stable. Uh, this is a classical story from textbook from John, uh, Jim Holton. Last edition was only from 2004 when he unfortunately died that spring. And some other literature. Of course, guru of turbulence, Zilitinkevich. This is a group from... Uh, uh, Denmark, the, although this is only a report, it's a very nice report. Gunilla Svensson and Bert Horschlag show that most, that, that about 50% operational models cannot produce this angle. So I tell them, what's use of your models then if you cannot produce or <laughs> linear solutions? Classic Ekman, if you take X equation, Y equation, ta ta ta, uh, you integrate them vertically. We have seen that several times here. It's a cute thing. And if u star is a friction velocity, here is in a flux form, you may get the definition how should be the boundary layer, a mass flux, and you get what should be the angle with average velocity, depth, and this form. So if you plug in here values, you easily may get lost because these angles can be totally wrong. It can be larger or smaller than uh, uh, one. You can imagine H here and large V and small u star that this cosine alpha goes uh, beyond uh, one, which is 
nonsense. So this is one of the ways to, to criticize the, the theory. So key elements there are identify the depth, perhaps uh, surface layer depth, and this alpha zero. Uh, I managed in two short steps using uh, asymptotic methods with WKB theory to show that this alpha is th about 32 degrees for some reasonable input. So I did some tuning, but just based on typical values that I uh, saw in the, in the nature. While uh, LES models show that it should be a, 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 around here. The way how they work is that they should have at least six grid points in the, in the surface layer. Uh, that, that is the cookbook for modelers, and many models don't have that. Vertical resolution is crucial, even with the finest uh, parametrization. That's the um, result of Svensson and Holschlag. Holschlag, I think, retired this year. Um, and then various other features can be obtained once we know this, this uh, angle. Uh, let's get more stratified, more cooling, and let's get more uh, tilted. Prandtl model is a role model for that because it, it in a most succinct way, combines the, the key features uh, there. So we'll see what happens with very stable boundary layers and how much Ludwig von Prandtl can handle it with some improvements. And there is a lot of space here for PhD students, of course, to do more. <coughs> Here how it looks, typically collapsed stable boundary layer, where it's collapsed, here, boom, here, boom, here, boom. Uh, this is Aladan model, which is similar to Hirla model, which is used heavily in at least 20 countries in Europe. Uh, what they do here, they just keep U star, friction velocity at minimum, artificially, and uh, they wait for reinitialization around midnight. This is the typical depth of the boundary layer, depending on which Richardson number you pick. So if you take dark, that some kind of critical Richardson number <laughs> exists, then you get this thickness of, I don't know, 2,000 meters and so on. So this is daytime, nighttime, daytime, nighttime, daytime, nighttime. And that is not well produced with most of models. <clears throat> uh, what do we have next? Uh, solid curves show over-diffused stable boundary layer. Dashed, uh, that's wind speed. Dashed is the correct answer, based on Prandtl model and, and some uh, measurements. Same for potential temperature, over-diffused. Typically, numerical models over-diffuse. Uh, when I'm talking numerical models here, I mean, well, I'm thinking on operational ones, and dashed is correct pot uh, potential temperature profile. So th the layer should be thin. Very stable boundary layer must be thin. And, and numerical models usually over diffuse it because of uh, either a wrong length scale or some other parts. Otherwise, bulk values agree. If you look the maxima, and if you would integrate in a tricky way, you could get almost the same quantities. You see the inversion strength here is about seven degrees, but here over 200 meters instead of over 30 meters. Here the speed is maximum six meters. Here is even more, but it should happen here, not at 170 meters. More about weakly and strongly stable boundary layers. In the uh, upper panel, we have normalized uh, momentum flux vertical momentum flux. In the lower one is normalized heat flux. Several uh, benchmark measurements uh, in the world. So around Richardson gradient number, uh, 0 0.25, nothing really special uh, happens. Things are happening here in this region around 0 0.1 until one, roughly. And you see that both fluxes, momentum and heat, decay, we knew that, we go to a regime of uh, weak mixing, but uh, heat flux minimizes more than momentum fluxes, which means that Prandtl 
turbulent number should increase when you go to strongly stable boundary layer. Because the ratio of between these two, that's like Km and Kh, uh, Kh goes towards zero, which is uh, heat eddy diffusivity. Classical parental mo model, beautiful toy, uh, toy. Uh, what it tells for momentum is that uh, buoyancy forces are retarded by turbulent mixing. And in uh, thermodynamic equation, what it remains only is uh, uh, adiabatic cooling or warming be because of going up and down, and that's balanced by heat, turbulent transfer. Uh, simple boundary conditions are given here. C is fixed te temperature. The, that's ideal for uh, glacier wind, as Nick, we talked uh, some other day. Yeah. Uh, if proper transformations are done, which should be in tensor form, then equation should even work for OK when sine alpha goes to 0, because you see period here would go to stupid infinity uh, value. But this is just done quickly by rotating coordinate uh, frame. Uh, once again, going in time with over-diffusive traditional stable boundary layer, that's on the left side, potential temperature and wind speed, over-diffusive and too long to get steady state. This is a proper solution, very stable boundary layer. Low-level jet established after a uh, after couple of hours that is determined only by background certification and the and, and the slope and potential uh, temperature here. So overall scales, again, are the same, but the structures are wrong with the typical models. <clears throat> uh, this is time-dependent parental model. Wh what I did is just to make a, instead of <clears throat> solving a uh, stationary equation, I solved the diffusion equation to see how it goes. This bow wow wow is a little bit uh, because of numerics, but there are really also this uh, buoyancy frequency present there. And this is numerical solution. So this model, <coughs> this is a Swedish model from U Uppsala, where I changed the length scale. The single change from over the diff diffusive uh, one, which was here, is change of the length scale, the one I showed you before. <coughs> this is what people see for uh, uh, real LES. Low level jet around height of six, seven meters when you scale that properly. And the speeds are about six or seven meters <coughs> here because this V is about 33 centimeters per second. Uh, what you see that steady flow doesn't really exist. There are, there are pushes even in the, in the uh, fixed input, fixed angle, and pulses, something is happening there. And two types of waves, those who are inclined up like this, that's an internal gravity part. And those that go vertically, they are external <coughs> uh, gravity parts because of these pushes, pumps that happen just due to turbulence there. So I didn't know what to do with that, so I went to a wild idea, and there I need help. So what I did, all the equations I will show now in red. This, that part, that's part of uh, parental model. And then this gamma times this US, and, and this is all. Nu is everything with epsilon. Epsilon is small parameter, which we can estimate somehow. And uh, it seems like that in that way, we could get even some sort of time variability in a modified, heavily modified uh, uh, parental model. Because we allow for total energy, which is a sum of, of kinetic and potential energy, uh, given by interac interaction term, which is this speed times uh, theta squared derivative minus pressure term. Pressure term I included here. I just took from inclined Navier-Stokes equations how it should be there. And here I added artificially d theta over this, dz. Why? Because 
Prandtl model produces temperature gradient about 50 or 100 times larger than what you assign with, the, with the gamma. So I thought that signal should be somehow put in a the, in the model in a kind of shy way. So here I would really like to get some ideas how to proceed further. <clears throat> and, and a little bit of a last part is a uh, hockey stick transition to, uh, against uh, uh, Moninobukov theory, uh, which is needed here in uh, parameterizations. <coughs> uh, measurements. <coughs> uh, whatever you look here, where is this transition? Here, and then linear increase. Here, you see, <coughs> the black one is when the boundary layer is weakly stratified. The green is when it's strongly stratified. And this is this hockey stick transition. That's coined uh, four or five years ago by <coughs> Jalen Soon. So you see here on her sketch, I, I, I'm discussing this part. <coughs> this is not captured by Monenobukov similarity theory. Monenobukov can do only that part. <coughs> Let's see a little bit more on that. Uh, here is just what to what, so you can read it yourself. Everything in the classical uh, theory for surface layers is scaled that height against Obuko uh, length. But when you have strong stratification and when wind is almost gone, when wind goes below half a meter per second that you can almost not measure, turbulence can be there, but modern Obuko theory doesn't work. So here is the definition of hockey stick, it, which does not have a proper ma math yet. So, it, it <clears throat> so what are the motives? What I did here <clears throat> took me two years to fight with uh, um, reviewers in quarterly journal. I added a term here, but in a nonlinear fashion. So th this is a sort of generalized friction uh, velocity due to non-classical turbulence, due to wind meandering due to non-stationarity and, and so on. Lots of data I looked for years in Anchor. There's more measurements of uh, uh, what the Dutch do. You see, th this is this hockey stick transition. Wind changes, kinematic flux stays there or vice versa. Here are measurements on several layers. Only these last two are misplaced. This is what gives you classical most, Monyanobuko uh, similarity theory. So it works when you pass a certain velocity. That is the key point. There is a critical velocity after which Monyanobukov is fine. Below that speed, you have problem with Monyanobukov theory in a classical sense. So once again, what is missing there? <clears throat> and or what are the assumptions of Monyanobukov uh, similarity theory are given here? Uh, However, turbulence, we know it can be intermittent, patchy, uh, in, in this equilibrium, which is all missing here because this theory assumes continuous turbulence. And here I would allow for some tricky combination of all other uh, uh, features. Once again, from uh, Larry Mart's measurements, See, here you change wind speed from small to, to one or two, very little. And here you should almost not have anything of uh, friction velocity, U star, but there it exists. <clears throat> so I go with this way. Uh, in the beginning I said, we, we, uh, this is a classical form. We have seen that on, on this workshop several times. And then I add this magic new term. And uh, this is very small compared to that one once your wind speed is above this critical uh, wind speed Vs. <clears throat> and when you are below, then this term dominates. This is quadratic equation for U star. That is easy thing to <clears throat> solve. So basically, when you have high wind, then U star behaves linearly with you, or oh, uh, this one is very small, unimportant, and Monin-Obukov theory is just fine. But for very low wind speed, you see, this is quadratic, which is, this is very slow dependence when wind speed is low. 
when it's, let's say, 0 0.5. So it's dominated by some background U star. This is a simple plot. This is Monio Nobukov, standard thing. This U star classic is square root of this. This is dash. And it, when you add this other additional term because of non-traditional turbulence, then I get this blue curve, which imitates, almost emulates this <coughs> hockey stick transition, this, this kick. Of course, it's not that dramatic, and it's, uh, uh, it doesn't have this continuity. It, it is smooth because it is an analytic toy. And we can estimate this critical wind speed, how much it should be. Then you may play also with Richardson <coughs> gradient number, but this is now maybe irrelevant. It's, it's more important for parameterizations because the bulk Richardson number can be estimated. U star <coughs> critical can be estimated. This del is a, some variation from a, if there's a, uh, there is a critical Richardson number. I don't believe it is, but many models use it. <coughs> uh, so those are some technical details. <coughs> what else I was just going to mention, what <coughs> puzzles me a lot is parametric instability and how to simplify it. So this is totally different story. I, I didn't say anything about that yet. Parametric instability, for that you need Floquet theory uh, that some um, waves become unstable just for certain uh, parameters, that you can get a gravity wave un unstable for Richardson number four or Richardson number nine, something like that. Weaker and weaker, but it exists there. Typical thing is a <coughs> uh, dishwashing machine when it starts to vibrate. When you say parametric, you mean for only a certain range of one? Yeah, yeah, yes. I agree, but, <coughs> but they are not imp Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yes, you mathematicians, you know that, but this is not implemented in climate and, and weather models in, in a proper way. No, it's not. It's not. It's oversmoothed. And also, last question, if a wave drag is still a good way to account for waves which are not resolved in, in, in numerical models. So basically what I did cover here, it says <coughs> once again here, uh, these three, four aspects. And here is about, I think, time to stop. Thank you. Anyone? Right, I'm going to ask a very general question. How trusting are you of the numerical simulation that you've been describing? <laughs> well, that's the best what we have for a weather forecast oh, and, and yeah, climate change. That, how trusting are you of them? Uh, it depends on situation and it depends on uh, which flow we try to, to simulate. Yeah. For very stable flows, uh, I don't trust them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For very stable, strongly stable. When uh, a gradient Richardson number goes above a 10, let's say. We say that... Uh, the, yes, well, what often happens that we imagine that flow is laminar. We laminarize it. And there is a very weak turbulence on the resolution that we don't see because gradient Richardson number uh, depends on del Z. And that's uh, the devil in, in details. If del Z is one meter and turbulence scale is half a meter, Richardson number can tell you that there is no turbulence. Yeah. <clears throat> Isn't that a concern 
That's a heavy question. Uh, when turbulence is very stratified, then sampling criteria can be violated because sometimes you need to use samples of only one or five minutes. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so pro problems are heavy. Let me just show you one of these measurements. See, depending on which height you are, you will obtain a different U star. So what worries me, look, uh, at height around 50, 55 meters, you go with wind speed from 0 0.5 to 6 meters per second, but U star does not change. That's totally against the Monyonobuco theory. And this is the point where I said, let's plug in some U star zero. So use for your own parameterization whatever you think should be there. Let's say Mandarin flow, let's say drainage flow, let's say unresolved sub-mesoscale gravity waves could punch in some turbulence because they do uh, transport momentum. So, so measurements are, are stuffed with, with, with uh, problems there, yeah. But 30 years ago, 40 years ago, nobody knew about it. Uh, we looked for Kansas exper experiment in early 70s and everything was fine. They threw away all the data which did not fit the <laughs> Monirobuk of similarity theory and we were happy campers then. They were kicking out all uh, outliers because instrumentation was not that good. Now we go sampling over 20 hertz, even 100. Yeah. Anything else? Oh, hey. Could you show again the, the system of the, the virtual the one which is multiplied, the one with the mass? Uh, the Prantl. <coughs> Yes. <clears throat> the original system is this one. This is Prantl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what this system expects, that your time has passed this magic time. This is time scale for typical Prantl model, this one. So if you weigh that, let's say that N is, 100 of hertz, and that slope is five degrees, then time is about two and a half, three hours. So you wait, uh, it's not yeah. Effort, you wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But model starts from discontinuity. And then you, and Ludwig did not wait for uh, that time. He said, let it settle, we go for a beer. And, and then after this time, he got the balance between turbulent friction and buoyancy. That model is also used for anabatic flows, but then it's not that good because you have problems with Boussinesque approximation and so on, but it's better for a catabatic one. And now I added terms, as you said, here and here. I added term here and here. This is the system in white. And I've been looking for total, total energy. <coughs> because I, I believe that that feature could be sometimes uh, conserved. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Not in this case. Uh, what, what, what I vaguely remember about uh, tornado genesis, that is uh, tilting and twisting of uh, uh, vorticity is important there, this one. We don't know the role of uh, helicity and uh, heat change on the surface is essential for, for, for moving uh, structures uh, around, but uh, I don't recall the, uh, the details. Tornadogenesis started, I mean, being ad addressed properly only in mid 80s after uh, Richard Tuno and, and, and some other seminal uh, works, measurements. <clears throat>